It's 9.30 in Pittsburgh. During the next half hour, a new disco opens downtown, and it's literally a little bit of heaven. A striking school teacher turns songwriter, and Contact announces its new volunteer training program. This and more coming up on Good Day Pittsburgh. <laughs> Good morning. Welcome to Good Day Pittsburgh with Eleanor Shana White and Tom Peterson with news. Good morning, everyone. It's Tuesday, October 16th, 1979. And if we have one wish here this morning, it's that our bucko spend two nights in Baltimore. We're going to meet our first guest in just a minute. Right now, it's time to switch over to Tom Peterson. He's ready with a morning news update. Good morning, Tom. Good morning, Eleanor, and good morning, everyone. The Pittsburgh City School Board may adopt one of three reorganization plans this morning as the basis for an overall new desegregation plan. The board had a public hearing last night at which the majority of witnesses there testified against all three proposals. But most said if they had the choice, they would pick the so-called 534 plan for the school system, that being five years of elementary, three of junior high, and four years of high school. The system currently has a combination of that grade structure. The school board must come up with a new desegregation plan by November the 7th or face contempt of court uh, charges. The Human Relations Commission rejected the magnet school plan last July. No new talks, meanwhile, are scheduled in either the West Jefferson Hills or the Bethel Park school teachers' strikes here in Allegheny County. Mount Lebanon's Board of Education approved the new pact with the teachers last night. The Pittsburgh City Police Department will have to make promotions on the basis of racial quotas in the future. Federal court here has ordered the promotion quotas, which means that the Pittsburgh Police Department is currently short four black sergeants and three police lieutenants. A Pittsburgh area man has been arrested on criminal homicide charges in the fatal stabbing of his estranged wife Marie in a downtown department store last night. Authorities said Regis Mannion of Scott Township went to the department store, purchased a knife, and allegedly stabbed his wife in the chest while she was working behind the cosmetics counter. She was pronounced dead on arrival at Allegheny General Hospital. Senator John Hines has called on local and federal officials to take steps to protect people from the illegal dumping of hazardous wastes across the Commonwealth. The Pennsylvania Republican toured a hazardous dump in Chester yesterday and called the problem potentially disastrous if stops are not made or taken to stop it. Meanwhile, the problems at the still-closed, never-really-opened Ohio River Park on Neville Island are becoming a political football these days. Yesterday, County Commissioner Tom Forster, who was running for re-election, called for an investigation by state, local, and federal authorities into the problem of buried hazardous wastes on the county park property. He blamed County Planning Director David O'Loughlin and County Commissioner Bob Pierce. Forster and Commissioner Chairman Jim Flaherty want to know how the park could be built with the knowledge that such wastes exist there. Commissioner Forrester called the snafu a conspiracy of silence. Pierce, meanwhile, said the charges are purely political. Several million dollars have already been put into that Ohio River Park. Pennsylvania's copay program for welfare recipients' drug prescriptions has been halted by a federal judge. Under the program, welfare recipients would have to pay the first 50 cents on each prescribed drug. Lengthy litigation is expected to follow. A plan to disperse subsidized housing throughout Allegheny County has been given approval by the Southwestern Regional Planning Commission. The plan is designed to break up the urban concentrations of housing for the poor. The action means that 2,100 new housing units will be built at various locations around Allegheny County. Members of the General Assembly, stung by criticism of recent attempts to increase their pay, as well as that of judges and other state officials, have devised a new plan tied to the increases in the cost of living. In sports, the Pirates are in Baltimore, as Eleanor said earlier, for the sixth game of the World Series tonight. John Candelaria is on the mound for the Bucks. Jim Palmer has the go for the Baltimore Birds. That's news in sports. Thanks for being with us. Now back to Ellie. Thank you, Tom. Now, if you thought disco was just a passing fad, well, you were wrong because discos are opening all the time, each one more opulent than the one before. And a brand new one is going to open right in the center of downtown Pittsburgh next month. And as we mentioned, literally, it's going to be a little bit of heaven because Rick Stern, that is what you decided to name your new disco, heaven. Why? Well, in my estimation, uh, the success of a discotheque um, depends on how much you can create a fantasy for the people. So uh, we have chosen to name it Heaven uh, as part of, part of the whole fantasy. All right, this is the Fulton Building, the old Fulton Building on uh, 6th Street in downtown Pittsburgh. And you were just telling me that the Fulton Building was, when it was built, uh, around the turn of the century, it was built with the idea of, uh, it was to be a hotel, but that, it never materialized. That's right. 
So it had the, the opulent architecture that the designers, and uh, we should mention that uh, the designers that you hired were the same ones that did Studio 54 in New York. That's right. They came in and they said, wow, we've never had so much to work with. The interesting thing is that when your workmen started to refurbish and remodel, they found this bottle. And where did they find it? Well, in the dome that's 40 feet above the dance floor, um, we were going. We had to remove some uh, cast iron filigree panels, and when we were remo we were removing the last panel, we found this bottle, and inside the bottle we found Carpenter's daily time slips from uh, dated October 16, 1906 which is 73 years ago today. Exactly, 73 years ago today. These slips were put in this bottle. And Rick, you have put these little pieces of paper under plastic here. Maybe you can read a little bit. If you can just read one of them, uh, I'll maybe hold this up so the camera can get 73 years old. And the thing that I found interesting was that uh, uh, this one gentleman lived in Allegheny, old Allegheny? That's right, Allegheny City. Which is, which is what, the north side, north side now. now. Uh, there are some names on here, and actually maybe out in the viewing audience right now are uh, grandchildren uh, of, of these gentlemen. That's right. Who's, uh, whose name is on here? Well, we have a Daniel Gayton that we have located some birth records and uh, have verified that he did exist. Were these birth records also in the bottle? No. They were somewhere We else. did some research on that. Okay. And uh, Daniel Gayton, and here I see a Fran, can you read that last name? Chapman or Shopman. Okay. I saw McKee's Rocks on one of these papers. I, okay, worked on this dome in 1906, address 312 Grantham. Grantham Street, Allegheny City, which is the north side, member of local whatever, and... Uh, Let's see, there was another note on here that if anyone finds this, is it's, that on yours over it's, here? It's this one right here. It says, the finder of this bottle, please try and find any of these boys, no matter when this is found, and we will tell you all about it. Okay, so uh, it was finally found. It took 73 years, and uh, heaven is going to open when? We're hoping uh, to open late, late November. It's going to be a disco. It's also going to have a fine restaurant. That's right. Um, Tony Settembre and Albert, Chef Albert from DeForos will be uh, assisting us with the restaurant. And um, we will also upstairs have a private membership lounge. Good luck to you, Rick Stern, with your new disco. That's what we need is a little bit of heaven here in Pittsburgh. The Bucks are going to bring us a little bit of heaven tonight I hope so. in Baltimore. We'll be right back. Strike boss call this morning. that old saw about it's an ill wind that doesn't blow some good. Mike McCauley is a Bethel Park uh, teacher. Bethel Park teachers have been on strike. It's now, what, the longest strike in uh, the history of the area, right? It's the longest strike this year. I think Pittsburgh was out longer than we were once. All right. Uh, you put your time to, to good use out on the picket line. Uh, you uh, wrote a song, and the song is entitled Picking on the picket line. Why, of course. What else? Picking on the picket line. And uh, Mike went down to Nashville, recorded this uh, song, and uh, it's going to be out when? 
It's going to be released nationally next week, also in Canada and England. Okay, now this is going to be a big hit. And what's going to happen to Mike McCauley? I mean, are you going to uh, go back to teaching English? I'm going to go back to teaching English as soon as the strike's settled. This is not your first song. You have written songs before. No, I've written about 17 songs that have been previously published in Nashville. This is just the first one I've ever had the chance to record. Well, we are delighted this morning that uh, you are here live and uh, you got your uh, guitar over there and we'd like to hear this record. Before it comes out, it's going to be released very, very soon. Picking on the Picket Line by Mike McCauley. Okay, Mike? Okay, I'll give you the rough cut version of it. <laughs> okay. Strike boss called this morning Said, son, you've got to walk the line So get up early, come down to the hall And pick up your picket sign And by the way, bring that old guitar It'll help to pass the time if you can entertain the boys and the girls with some picking on the picket line. Now I don't like to go on strike, but I sure don't like to lose. And I just can't stand to hear the man singing them poor house blues. Now we may be here until next year walking and carrying signs and if you don't see me on the grand old opry i'll be picking on the picket line well they may slap us with an injunction they may make us pay a fine before this thing is finally over you know they'll try to break our minds But when things get rough We'll just hang tough And try to bide our time And whatever the news I'll be paying my dues Picking on the picket line Now I don't like to go on strike But I sure don't like to lose And I just can't stand Picking on the picket line And if you don't see me on the Grand Old Opry I'll be picking on the picket Contact Pittsburgh Incorporated is a 24-hour crisis intervention center, and with us now is the director, Reverend Oren Camp, and uh, Mary Lou Dixon. Uh, I want you to tell us a little bit, Reverend, if you will, about Contact and the, uh, the service that it does perform to the community. Yes, well, as you said, Eleanor, we are a 24-hour telephone counseling crisis intervention center. 
that is our primary service that we offer to the people of Allegheny County and beyond Pittsburgh. We also are an information and referral source as well for those individuals who the process of listening and talking with them via the phone may not be all that they need. Uh, we do have an extensive referral list and sources that we can refer them to somebody who can help them. Mary Lou, what kind of, uh, what kind of help do you provide? When you say 24 hours, that means that at 3 o'clock in the morning if someone needs help, they can pick up the phone yes. and there is a, a friendly, helpful voice mm -hmm. on the other end. Yes, we had a man call us one time and said, if I had just known you were open Christmas Day, I would have had somebody to talk to. And do you get most of your calls uh, at night? rather than during the day? Uh, there, it, it's scattered, but I would say there's certain periods we have certain types of calls we get more of at night. How many phone calls uh, do you average in, in a Usually, year? Usually uh, in a year, well, I can tell you in a month, it, it varies between 1,500 and 2,000 calls. Close to 20,000 A lot year. of these people are just lonely, right? They just want someone to talk to. A lot of are lonely people, but also uh, in terms of the, the basic issues, uh, marital difficulties or basic mental health issues also comprise a lot of the calls. This is a, a volunteer program, and we live in a day uh, and time when it's very difficult to find people to volunteer their time for anything. Uh, we're getting to the point where people want to be paid for their work. So how are you able to get people to do this sort of work for nothing? You appeal to people's values if you care about people. Uh, you care to give your time. That makes it easier. And actually, the volunteers have to go through a rather exhaustive training program. You just don't take someone who says, well, I'd like to help you, Reverend. Uh, right. I'll come down and answer the phones this afternoon. Right. We, we like to think that the people who are uh, on the line and are there for the public are people who are well-trained and are mature and responsible enough that they can do their best when working with a caller. And so it's an intensive 50-hour training program that they go through that extends out over a 16-week period. Mm -hmm. and they receive exposure to all of the, the basic themes or issues that they will encounter on the phone. Mm -hmm. And uh, these issues range, as you said, from uh, uh, help with marital problems, uh, Crisis, drug abuse. Mm -hmm. death and grief, sexuality. Mm -hmm. Alienation, lack of self-esteem, all the contemporary problems that people have we hear about. Do you have a phone number that uh, you can share with our viewers? Yes, it's 782-4023. And you will have a volunteer training program starting again when? In the spring? Starting in March. We will have uh, our next, our 20th training class. Do you have much of a turnover with your volunteers or do they stay with you for quite a while? Our turnover rate is, uh, interestingly, you talk about volunteerism, that's, a, that's an interesting phenomenon. Uh, it's quite low. Uh, we do have an attrition rate. Uh, we have approximately 150 active volunteers right now. We lose about 30 a year, so we try to not only keep up with that, but to increase mm -hmm. uh, our level of volunteers. Uh, about how many hours does a volunteer average in a week? Uh, well, we have uh, at least 50 uh, hours of training mm -hmm. and before we go on, and then we have continued in-service training. But the time spent on the phone varies. We, uh, we uh, ask at least a minimum of eight hours a month. Do you have trouble finding volunteers to work that uh, Graveyard shift? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it gets a little difficult, but fortunately our people are very dedicated that once they have that experience of working on the phone and they hear the tremendous need that's out there, mm -hmm. uh, people respond. And so we're there 24 hours every day. This is part of a, a nationwide network. Yes, mm -hmm. that's correct. Mm -hmm. We're one right now of, uh, I believe it's 94 different contact centers around the country. That phone number again, let's just give it to them one more time. Okay, right? it's 782. I want to thank you, Reverend Oren Camp, the Director of Contact, and Mary Lou Dixon for stopping by and sharing this information with us this morning. And uh, maybe you'll join me now. I'm going to catch up with our roving reporter. His name is Don Jack. And uh, in this installment of the American Trails uh, series, Don this morning is going to take us on a railroad uh, ride through uh, Strasburg, Pennsylvania. The American Trail, presented by Agway and its farmer owners across the Northeast, growing food for America. With the old familiar, all aboard, and a wave of the conductor's arm, the Strasburg, Pennsylvania Railroad heads out of the station and begins a four and one half mile run through the scenic Amish countryside of Southeast Pennsylvania. A run that began a century and a half ago when this steam railroad received its charter. We 
accepted recently the conductor's challenge to climb aboard the old steam train and we took a ride on the Strasbourg for old time's sake. Alice Bachman is one of the vice presidents of this steam road. Well, our history goes back to 1832. The railroad is the oldest licensed common carrier in Pennsylvania. And except for the Baltimore and Ohio, we are the oldest operating railroad in the country. We were chartered by the Pennsylvania State Legislature in 1832 for a group of local citizens who wanted to establish a railroad here because they were afraid of losing the valuable trade that was coming by wagons into the interior from Philadelphia. It was good until the mid-50s, the mid-1950s, and then you and some other rail fans took it over. How did that happen? Well, in 1958, the railroad had gotten to the point where it was in disuse, and the owners, which was a single family, had, to, had decided to petition for abandonment. So this group of hobbyists, 23, 24 individuals, came along and decided to buy it for whatever they could buy it for, and it was scrap iron price. They figured what it was worth loaded on a flat, flat car and to be sold as scrap. Now, it's authentic uh, rolling stock, the passenger cars, it's authentic steam trains. Where do you get these locomotives? Well, the locomotives come from anywhere you can get them. The one that's pulling us today was built for the Great Western Railroad out in the mid part of the country, and it's the largest of our locomotives. It's known as a decapod. That is, it has 10 driving wheels. Where do you find the people who still know how to drive these old steam locomotives? We've had to learn ourselves. Basically, uh, back in 58 when we started in the early uh, 60s, we had people who were retired railroaders came in here to teach us how to do this job. It's only four and a half miles. Are you planning to extend the track beyond that point? Make oh, no. Uh, track is expensive work, very expensive. and it, uh, just to maintain what we have is quite enough. We don't need that anymore. And our schedule, 45 minutes for a ride, seems to fit well into people's patterns. So they'll go for an hour ride, but any more than that would be a little much. Four and one half miles in 45 minutes won't set land speed records for steam trains, but in this case, it's not where we're going, but rather how we get there that counts. And even with a bit of cinder in our eye, it's still a ride fit for a king. We're on the Strasburg, Pennsylvania Railroad on the American Trail. The American Trail, brought to you by Agway. Feeding animals on the farm so your family can have wholesome food to eat and drink, feeding family pets for the health and energy they need, Agway nourishes animals with years of experience. Agway, pioneering in animal nutrition. The call comes in to the Cape Cod Coast Guard Station, and Lieutenant Craig Coy takes off on another search and rescue mission. That's the next American trade. The weather forecast for Pittsburgh and vicinity, partly cloudy with a chance of showers through tonight. High today in the mid-60s, low tonight near 50, high Wednesday in the mid to upper 60s. October 16th, 1979. Let's see what kind of day it's going to be for you. We're going to switch out to Shady Side now. That's where we find Harriet Friedlander at the Sign of Aquarius bookstore. And as usual, Harriet is ready with your daily horoscope. October 16th. Aries, be proud of the special accomplishment today. Accept the compliment graciously, but keep on trying. Taurus. Give some thought to your appearance now. Be sure that you look your best. Gemini, 
it may be wise to check the home for needed repairs. Look at electrical outlets. Cancer, a relative or neighbor may appreciate some help from, from you. Do a kind deed. Leo, keep your personal vanity in check now. Like yourself, but like others too. Virgo, renewed energy can keep you very busy. Use good judgment in whatever you do. Libra, do what is necessary to protect your health today. Think about your daily schedule. Scorpio, some results from previous efforts can come now. Be pleased with the rewards you receive. Sagittarius, follow a hunch and see where it takes you. Much progress can be made now. Capricorn, use your knowledge to help someone else. Be generous with the information you have. Aquarius, family finances can become more stable now if all members will work together. Pisces, try to understand an associate's viewpoint. It could be important to your welfare later. We have a little bit of time left, and we wanted to chat with Mike McCauley, the Bethel Park school teacher who wrote that, uh, that great song, and I predict it is going to be a great success, Picking on the Picket Line. Actually, Mike, what you've done is you've uh, provided a little bit of levity to a very serious subject. What do you think these long strikes actually do to the kids? I don't know. It's hard on everybody. There's no question about that. I've said before that I think in a situation like this, everybody ultimately loses. Uh, th there's no good way out of it, particularly a strike that lasts this long. I d we're just trying to do the best we can at this point. And uh, through music, I think that uh, we can bridge a lot of emotional gaps, and that's what you've been able to do. As you told us before, this is not the first song you've written. Uh, how, how was this idea uh, developed? I mean, actually, you're, you're, you're walking on, you have served some time on that picket line, right? right? Quite a bit of time, as a matter of fact, on the picket line. Uh, one of the negotiators asked me to write the song. Uh, at first just to sing at a rally, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, I wrote the song and then everybody liked it and they thought it ought to be recorded and they thought it ought to be published and so forth. So we did a demo up in uh, uh, North Hills at Night Star Studios and sent it to my publisher in Nashville and uh, she liked the song very much and so she released it and uh, suddenly just a little project on a picket line has become uh, you know, a record. Good, strong lyrics, and actually, uh, you know, the, the, the kind of lyrics that do not just apply to a teacher's strike, uh, to uh, any kind of labor dispute where you say, hey, I don't like to strike, but I don't like to lose. Right. And unfortunately, again, it's another perhaps sad commentary on our times, but we do have labor disputes. We do have uh, very long strikes uh, in all areas of uh, business and industry. And for that reason, I make that prediction again. This is going to be a big hit. If it is, what happens to Mike McCauley? Do you go back to the classroom? Well, I'm definitely going back to the classroom after the strike is over if uh, the song gets big enough that it requires my attention through tours and one thing and another. I always have the option of taking a sabbatical. And I may do that, but uh, at this point I have absolutely no plans whatsoever to quit teaching. Do you not feel perhaps after this uh, lengthy strike that you do have some sort of serious commitment to the kids in Bethel Park? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, they've lost a lot of time and uh, we've got to they've do the best They've lost a lot of can. trust too, haven't yes, they? Yes, I think so. And we're going to have to do everything we can to make up those deficits, and I'm sure everybody will. Mike McCauley, I want to wish you the very best of luck again. The song, and you're going to be hearing it uh, quite a lot, Picking on the Picket Line. And uh, if we just have a second, this is a great picture. Now, this is this going to be uh, used, uh, what, in, in some of the yes, publicity? Yes, that's going to be one of the promo pictures. Where was it taken? That was taken in South Park. Are you a horseman, too? No. Sure no, do look like one. I just one. sit on the fence and hold the guitar and the horse. <laughs> sure very do politely look like one. Over. Mike McCauley, uh, good luck to you. Tomorrow morning, we hope that you'll join us for Good Day Pittsburgh. We're going to have Alma Renee return, and Alma is our Good Day Makeover Contest winner. She was with us last week. You saw the before of Alma. Tomorrow, she comes back with her new hairstyle and her new makeup and uh, all of the great things that uh, they uh, did uh, with Alma down at uh, Kaufman. So, Alma will be here. We're also going to have a bird show talking about co ed. So, join us tomorrow morning. Have a nice day. This has been Good Day Pittsburgh with Eleanor Sheena White and Tom Peterson with news. Join us each weekday morning at 9.30 for a special blend of features and interviews on Good Day Pittsburgh.